I'm shooting in Adobe color space and I'm doing it especially today on purpose because hopefully I'll get some nice picture uh, together with the picture which I took uh, two or three weeks ago by the Danube River I want to combine this picture into the second part of the video which I shot as, as I said two or three weeks ago about uh, different way of post-processing I mean with the Lightroom but actually more in Photoshop using LAB lab color mode to really saturate the, 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 the picture to get the boost of the colors but not oversaturating it. The LAB lab color mode is much much wider uh, color space and it's easier to really get some fantastic results much easier uh, than using uh, RGB uh, color modes and with RGB it's easier to really overdo it. I already pre-selected four or five pictures from that day. I mean, as you see here, this is a raw image, untouched. And basically from here, I got to here uh, with very few steps. And and this is actually not done really in Lightroom. So this is, I wanted to show you this not really new technique. It's, it's, I think it's quite known, it's just people don't perhaps don't use it because it, it, it requires Photoshop and uh, and it's not using RGB color space, color mode. Um, I'm editing some of the pictures in LAB or sometimes it's called lab uh, color modes uh, which gives me much more uh, boost in terms of colors. I mean, if the picture is underexposed or overexposed, there's nothing to, you, you can do. But if you got everything captured in a raw footage, uh, you can really bring back some colors which were, which we've seen, but the camera, let's say, especially in the raw format, was not able to uh, show. So let's jump into it. I mean, it, it's, it, it's really simple and I, I just wanted to show you what I've done. I mean, for example, as you see, see those two pictures, they are, this is the raw image, this is the final image. It took me like three, four minutes to post-process it. Another, another example of this LAB capabilities is, is for instance, this. I didn't want to, I didn't exaggerate too much. I mean, raw is already, relatively nice but I, I still wanted to bring back some blue colors and and uh, the colors here of the shelf. Uh, a good example here would be also this one, those two. I mean this is the raw and this is post-process in LAB mode. Uh, I didn't use, it looks like I used um, golden blue polarizer here on this picture but no. I only used um, if I remember, it was a little stopper polarizer, just a standard circular polarizer, and uh, ND grad to cover this uh, sky section. But anyway, let's look at this picture again. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm going to get exactly the same results now. It might be that it will be a bit different, but let's do it. So we are in develop module. As you see on the histogram, I got everything there's no clipping nothing and the picture is untouched with the white balance i think i set the camera to clouds i'm not sure so let's set it again to clouds uh, one thing which i'm not sure is it really important but it helps me and i'm used to it i know this picture was shot in adobe color space so instead of choosing camera standard which is default in lightroom i will go to adobe standard and the pictures might become even flatter well not really flatter but it sort of gave me some a little bit more 
more color space but it still looks relatively flat I just want to do my standard preset which is uh, a little I will remove a little bit of highlights bring back some shadows add some contrast but this could be done later and clarity I'm not touching vibrance I'm not touching saturation that's it that's that's my let's just go to 20 contrast but this could be also done later in Photoshop theoretically I don't have to even do it so let's take this picture into Lightroom so edit in Photoshop sorry not into Lightroom let's take this picture into Photoshop so we are in Photoshop it's exactly the same picture as you see boring but let's make some magic out of it as you see here it's RGB color space uh, I leave it as it is for now what I'm going to do there, and again I've seen two different or maybe even three or four different ways of doing it some people change this original image into a LAB mode some people copy as a smart object into the new file some people just copy this layer as a, as a new file I honestly don't know what's the difference in terms of quality change when I switch between LAB to uh, back to RBG do I lose any information again it's different videos or different materials I found say some some people say you lose some information some people say don't I just have to test it and that for the time being I don't know anyway let's copy this image so I will just duplicate this layer as it is but into the new document so as you see it's created simply untitled new document it's still in RGB but now what's important and that's the major difference is I'm going to change the mode so from RGB I'm going to lab LAB which is luminosity A and B which I really don't know where this A and B came from the main difference is if you look at the channels here so it's not RGB anymore this is the lightness so here I can work with the curve on the luminosity not affecting a single uh, color and here is the channel A which is green and magenta and the channel B is blue and yellow so it looks a bit ugly at the moment but you will see in a second that this picture will become something totally different totally new um, we can copy this layer as well just in case but on the other hand I have the file as the original so it doesn't really matter I will apply here the uh, curve adjustment so for the time being it looks normal so this is lightness we could play here with the normal uh, S curve to get some contrast but in LAB at this point I don't really care for me this is what's important are the colors so let's just reset this and let's go to a channel now look at the histogram here it, it's just like a spike so what I'm going to do when I start pulling those ends of the curve towards the middle towards the uh, the spike you will see the difference so if I start pulling look what happens by reducing here this distance I'm actually expanding the color range so now it's becoming everything is becoming greener and greener and greener okay here I'm, I would be already clipping the colors but the, the, again there is no rule what's right or wrong the basic idea is to pull uh, to pull this histogram sorry not histogram pull the line more or less equally from both sides so we instead of changing the color cast or change adding the color cast changing the color we equally just shrink it and this results in expanding the range of colors so we get more colors more color boost but not with the normal typical RGB saturation so here I have on this side I have 126 now let's go back here and let's try to get this also we are at the two sorry I was wrong here is minus 77 so let's go to here minus 77 so 
we're bringing back the the same color balance from what what we had on the original picture but notice what is happening here to the clouds especially those those pink clouds um which have this, this this picture was actually taken before the sunrise so i can go even i want to get more boost i want to get more of it so let's go more so let's say those three lines those the, those grids are really helpful here so let's go to you can also type here so this is a minus 50 and let's go select this one and let's go also to 50 look at it look at this reflection here in the water what's important is that this line this curve line should cross in the here in the middle that means we know that we don't bring any any color cast for one re i mean for sometimes you would want to have some different color effect okay so those were um, greens and magentas sorry yes green and magentas let's go to a b channel because now we are losing some uh, other colors especially now we need to bring back some uh, color of the sky we could do the same trick here so we go to minus 50 but looks what happens it's just horribly blue but now we're shrinking now the yellow channel and look what happens so we brought so we have this fantastic colors now so this is minus 50 sometimes it's easier simply to type and this one is 50 now if i close this look look so this is we are getting there we're almost getting there this is before and after okay so now i have so now i have a relatively nice foreground but i still want to bring back some details from the sky so because here it's nice and dark and here is the rise well you don't really see the rising sun but this is what the sun would be coming i want to darken this part a bit so let's just do create a new layer sorry adjustment layer and this time just with the levels and i'm going to use the lightness uh, channel so I want to darken the picture. I want to darken it. So I want to increase, you see, um, darkening the whole picture at the moment. Let's just cut out here. Yeah. Cool, well, we're getting there. But now I affected the whole picture. Now you, we have a mask here. So what I'm going to do, I will brush with, I will brush with the black, uh, color the foreground so I want to reveal this this I want to reveal this foreground those details here I mean I'm doing it fast now just for the video purposes just to have an idea and okay it takes a moment now So if you look at the mask here, I, I hid the foreground and I left this upper corner. I mean, this, this could be done in more details, but see the difference. Now, what I'm going to do, again, this, this, this is done really just for the video. When I, when I was really post-processing this picture, I spent more time tweaking it. I just want to sh quickly really show this. Uh, think with the lab so from the flat picture we're going into really really saturated color i mean we could still exaggerate to go even even stronger so you, we, we could have really saturated picture and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't it, it, it just depends you see i think this is too much already but this is just an uh, example and uh, what i'm going to do now because i don't really need those details i mean i don't really need those layers as layers i want to convert it into a smart object and as i said before i've seen few tutorials few videos some people convert it into smart object some people simply uh, flatten this and now this layer 
I'm going to duplicate as a copy into my original picture, which is RGB. So now the, the Photoshop will automatically uh, convert this LAB picture layer into RGB. So if I click OK, this theoretically I could close it and don't even save it. So now I am back in my original RGB color mode. If I go here, image mode, you see it is RGB. So now look, this is before completely flat. This is corrected. Now we could do as a normal, I mean, now the further post processing could be done in Photoshop and in Lightroom. What I like to do here, just to copy the layer, uh, I could, for instance, give some real boost and, and some clarity and, and drama. I could set this op uh, uh, blending mode into multiply, which obviously now it's a bit too much. But look, if I now change the opacity of this layer to, let's say, 30, you see the difference? It's just without touching the curve, I'm getting the nice contrast. Look at here at those colors, the gradation of the color from, from blue, pink into yellowish orange sort of and it's and it's the color range is much much i wouldn't be much much greater i wouldn't be able to get it uh using a normal rgb processing so let's for me at the moment this is also a bit too dark so let's add a layer mask again the brush with the black stroke i'm at the opacity 50 and let's just reveal a little bit of this dark areas let's get those stones yeah maybe maybe change the a little bit here of the forest from the other side of the river and yeah i mean again this is a fast one so what i'm going to do now i will just Again, I could just save it as it is with the layers, but now this picture became like 341 megabytes, which I don't really need for the time being. I can just flatten the image. And now I have 100 megabytes. Let me just save it. So close, save, and this is automatically now, it takes a moment. And we have three pictures at the moment. This was my the one which I did before, and this is, with the one, is the one which we edited right now. And let's compare those three. Okay, you see, we started here, we ended up here, and I think I'm close, I'm close. I think I, okay, this one, this, this is the one which I did a few weeks ago, I mean post-process. This one we did now very fast, so obviously I was, I was doing a little bit more of a, I spend more time on it, not not just for the purpose of the video, but video. But you get the idea. And uh, really, from this to this, it would be much more difficult to do it purely in Lightroom uh, in uh, in RGB mode. I hope it was useful. Uh, it's like uh, another tip, another tip how to deal with really flat images. Sometimes. It works sometimes it doesn't i mean if if the picture is really nicely exposed and the light was good lightroom and rgb will be more than enough but if there is like a really gray day um, it might be useful to spend a little bit more time uh, and find some uh, different way of post-processing and maybe we'll get to some uh, real nice results so till next time this was yeji yeji bin photography Please make sure to subscribe because there will be lots and lots of new videos coming now this spring uh, and see you later.